Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Tim Selke. I'm the Park Services Manager for the City of Carlsbad. This is our uh, pre-bid meeting for the Parks Maintenance Services Category B, RFB 2105. I'm going to share my screen. I have a few uh, slides to share with you all today, just highlighting some portions of the RFB document that we want to call your attention to. So let me share my screen with you now. And everybody see the, uh, the slideshow okay? Okay, perfect. So good morning again. Uh, just so everybody knows, this meeting will be recorded. Uh, the video will be posted to the City of Carlsbad purchasing page on the city's website. Um, it is mandatory uh, meeting, so if you weren't able to attend uh, right now, you can watch the video and attest to that uh, via the Guarantee of Good Faith document, which I'll get to in a second. So once again, I am Tim Selke. I'm the Park Services Manager. We have uh, Phil Christman with us today, our Park Superintendent, uh, Morgan Rockdale, our Parks Supervisor, who oversees this uh, scope of work category, and Shay Sains, our Senior Contract Administrator, who's uh, assisted with the production of the RFB document and the bidding process. And she'll speak to that, uh, some, some parts of the RFB document in a bit. So I'll just start by outlining the timeline here. So we did release the RFB on April 6th. Uh, today is the 21st, is our pre-bid meeting. Uh, we will not be taking any questions uh, today. So all questions that you might have related to this RFB shall be submitted in writing uh, to me um, by 2 p.m. on April 30th. We will then compile all the questions that we've received. We will provide written answers and they'll be uploaded to Planet Bids um, by two o'clock on May 4th. RFB submittals are then due um, by two o'clock on May 20th. That is all via Planet Bids, which Shay will talk about in a little bit. Again, any questions that you might have will be submitted to me by email. My email address is here on the screen, also uh, in the, the RFB document. The submittal process is uh, via e-bidding, so that we're not accepting any um, hard copies or paper copies of bids. It's available through the city website uh, and on Planet Bids. You must be registered as a document holder to receive updates and notices. The website there is on the screen, also in the bid document. Uh, Planet Bids, if there's any addendums that might be issued, it would all be through Planet Bids and you would need to uh, receive notifications and get everything uh, through that, that website. So I'm gonna just go through the, the RFP document. This is not intended to be a complete, you know, exhaustive review of everything in this document. Um, we expect and encourage you all to review the document on your own. I'm simply going to highlight some areas that we think are important, um, draw your attention to specific areas, uh, but we do expect that if I don't cover it here today, uh, that you will read the document and you will um, be aware of everything that, that's in there. So page three is very important of the document. This is the guarantee of good faith. There is no bid bond associated with this project. So this document needs to be completed uh, and signed and submitted with your proposal. Uh, this serves as your, your guarantee uh, of the, the pricing that you provided to us, but also serves as your a testament to the fact that you either attended this meeting today or you watched uh, the video that will be posted online. If you don't submit this guarantee of good faith document, uh, your bid will be rejected. So I'm gonna just quickly clip through uh, some sections here in the introduction uh, and through both scope of work categories that are in the document. So again, this is the request for bids for category B, which is our trees maintenance category. Uh, you may bid on this category if you meet all the qualifications in the RFB. Um, our goal is to have a successful contractor starting on Friday, July 16th. This contract is intended to be for an initial two-year term, and there will be an option for additional for two two-year uh, optional extensions, so for a total of potentially six uh, years of the contract. You know, the city of Carlsbad has consistently uh, ranked high amongst uh, residents with their satisfaction from the services that we provide, quality of life, libraries, parks, safety, and specific to this request for proposal, uh, recently uh, residents indicated 95% were satisfied with the quality of our parks, 89% uh, 
uh, satisfied with the quality of the city's trails and walking paths. Um, it is our intention to maintain uh, these, these results and potentially even uh, get them higher. So we do expect that any vendor that we contract with will have a similar goal. Um, likewise, we do operate in a lean manner. There is high expectations in the community for value, accountability, and transparency. So it is important that we ensure the taxpayers are receiving the most efficient and cost-effective delivery of services uh, to the residents. General requirements. This is uh, starting off on page eight of the document. This is scope of work category A. Uh, this is more general. This scope of work category applies to all of our parks maintenance categories. So from our grounds maintenance uh, categories, parks, facilities, trails, uh, and including this scope of work for, for trees maintenance. So a lot of these, um, these specifications apply across the board. Uh, we do expect that all of our parks are and our, our, our premises are maintained in a crisp, clean appearance. All work is performed in a professional, work, workmanlike manner, quality equipment and materials. We expect that a contractor has the appropriate staff and equipment to perform the work that's outlined in scope of work uh, within the timeframes that are expected. This uh, agreement requires the contractor to provide all labor materials, equipment, tools, services necessary for the service. And it's expected that the standards are met in no less than the minimum frequencies in the contract. We do expect the contractor to have workers who are competent to perform the work that is assigned to them. Um, we do reserve the right to uh, ultimately, if we determine that there's uh, staff that are not competent to ask the contractor to have them re removed and replaced. We do expect that once the contract is executed, that the contractor is fully equipped and thoroughly familiar with the contract requirements and prepared to provide the services at the time. Um, this is not necessarily um, really specific to tree trimming, but we do want to make it clear that the city of Carlsbad has a really good reputation when it comes to stormwater pollution prevention. And you know our reputation with the regional board uh, is very good and we, we intend to keep it that way. So if there is work that is being performed that requires BMPs or some kind of stormwater pollution prevention, uh, it is part of the agreement and we do expect that contractors comply with the Regional Water Quality Control Board permit, the City of Carlsbad Jurisdictional Urban Runoff Management Plan, and the City of Carlsbad Municipal Code uh, relating to stormwater pollution prevention. Um, this contract requires a C27 contractor's license uh, in addition to um, tree trimming license, which I'll get to in scope of work uh, category B when I get to that part. Contractor is expected to provide sufficient personnel to perform all work in accordance with the specifications. Uh, this is a seven day a week agreement. So while typically, you know, we do have work being performed Monday through Fridays, there are occasions when there may be a need for uh, Saturday work. I don't necessarily anticipate uh, much work on Sundays, but it is possible. So I need you to be uh, aware of that. Um, the hours of work are 7 a.m. to 4, to 4 p.m. There is a noise ordinance in the city, so we cannot be running uh, chainsaws prior to 7 a.m. And that is uh, no exceptions are expected there. Um, I'm drawing your attention here to travel lane closures, and I'll bring it up again when it comes to traffic control. But please pay attention to the section 4.03 relating to uh, travel lane closures on arterial roads and the hours that are listed here, 8.30 to 3.30. We do intend to provide the contractor the maximum latitude in establishing work schedules, but we do also expect that the, the contractor needs to adhere to the tree pruning schedule that we have developed and is provided uh, in generally in the appendix that's um, attached to the RFP document. We would expect to see a, a, a schedule within 30 days of uh, executing the contract that would kind of outline the scope of work, the um, staffing that you're going to provide and how you're going to keep up with the, the pruning schedule that the city has provided. It may be that we have uh, expanded scope of contract. So <clears throat> at times the city might take on uh, additional areas for maintenance. 
um, and, and need to include uh, sites that might not have been included in the original contract. So we do put this, um, make mention of this, that there could be the option for expanded work uh, depending on what happens uh, in the future, which we don't know now. So expanded work can be awarded on a negotiated bid and acceptance uh, basis if the city determines it's uh, appropriate. Uh, similarly, there has been times where we've had to remove uh, sections from a contract because uh, maybe a property was sold or is no longer uh, service is no longer needed there. So the, the city does have the right to uh, amend the contract dependent upon scope of changes. Uh, if we do determine that there is work that needs to be done of unknown duration and is not easily quantified, we do uh, reserve the right to perform work with other forces. Additionally, there is extra work um, provision in this agreement. So there's times when we would need to have something done that is not specifically uh, in the scope of work for this category. And part of that uh, cost proposal is at the end, uh, we may need to have uh, trees removed or uh, additional pruning done. Uh, maybe trees planted, something like that. So we do have the provision for extra work to be performed by the contractor. Some of the, the costs are uh, outlined in the, the bid. Um, we have the ability to you know, re request a proposal and agree to uh, extra work based upon those proposals. If the cost of any extra work exceeds $60,000, then we would need to be uh, done competitively bid based upon the city's purchasing policies. If we do find a condition that is deemed urgent or some sort of an emergency, we can authorize extra work um, upon receiving a verbal estimate. However, we would need a written estimate within 24 hours afterward uh, to, to authorize the work. Emergency response is a big uh, part of this agreement, so I need everyone to be aware of that. We do expect the, the contractor to have a single telephone number with a local uh, San Diego area code at which you know we can contact um, for 24 hours a day, seven day a week emergency calls. Uh, we do expect the contractor to respond within 30 minutes uh, to the call for hours beyond the normal 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. business day. Uh, there are times, especially in the winter, uh, where we do have uh, overnight emergencies, trees that fall into roadways and things like that uh, that do require uh, emergency response that is part of this agreement. Obviously, with all uh, tree trimming work and all maintenance, uh, maintenance work, safety is a huge uh, is a huge issue for us, and we fully expect the contractor to perform all the services uh, in this agreement in a manner to meet all accepted standards for safe practices uh, during the maintenance operation and to safely maintain your equipment, machines, and materials uh, related to the services. Uh, it is the sole responsibility of the contractor to comply with all city, county, state, and federal requirements at all times to protect persons, including your own employees, as well as agents of the city and members of the public from other foreseeable injury damage to their property. Obviously, we know safety is extremely important to you as a, as a vendor, and it is likewise uh, to us and maintaining the safety of our staff and members of the public. Traffic control uh, is a big piece of this, this agreement. Obviously, uh, a lot of the trees that we are um, requesting proposals to maintain here are in public right-of-ways. We're talking about uh, medians on arterial roads throughout the city uh, and our streetscapes and, um, and parkways. So prior to any work in the public right-of-way, contractors shall submit documentation of compliance with applicable traffic control regulations. They shall submit supplementary traffic control plans for circumstances that are out of the ordinary. Uh, we may request traffic control plans for situations that are uh, in the ordinary. Uh, it, it's a very important piece of this uh, work. And it is, it is critical to us that traffic control uh, is being done in accordance with the, the MUTCD um, and with, you know, in compliance with City of Carlsbad uh, expectations. So, Please be aware that staff will likely ask for traffic control plans uh, for any lane closures or any work in the roads, especially the arterials, medians, and parkways. Uh, Section 18, non-interference noise. The uh, contractor shall not interfere with the public use of the premises and shall conduct its operations as to offer the least possible obstruction and inconvenience to the public as possible. 
Um, obviously, we understand that there is going to be some uh, impact, but we just ask that this is done in a, in a manner to provide the least possible uh, obstruction. Again, I mentioned the noise ordinance. So we do have the noise ordinance. No power equipment prior to 7 a.m. or later than 7 p.m., except under emergency circumstances. Obviously, like I mentioned before, if a tree falls in the road in the middle of the night, we need to use uh, power equipment to clean it up. That is, that is fine. But under normal circumstances, uh, nothing but prior to 7 a.m. We do have a uh, integrated pest management plan that was adopted in 2017. So all work involving the use of pesticides obviously needs to be in compliance with all federal, state, and local laws, uh, shall be accomplished under the direction of a certified uh, qualified applicator. In addition, we do have our integrated pest management plan that is a organics first uh, plan. So we, we do uh, put an emphasis on uh, using green and organic products first. It doesn't exclude the use of any, any herbicides or pesticides. It just, as all IPMs, good IPMs do, we look for the least possibly um, you know, uh, impactful uh, product first, and we will work our way to uh, more impactful products if necessary. Disposal is at the um, is on the contractor, so all landscape debris shall be disposed through a landscape material recycling center or reused, uh, not disposed of in a landfill without approval from the city. It is on the contractor to dispose of all cuttings and um, trimmings, sump grindings, chips, whatever you may have uh, that is on the contractor that should be included as part of your proposal. Use of city dumpsters is not allowed. Uh, at any of our sites and the contractor is responsible to pay all disposal fees. Protection of existing facilities and, stru and structures. Uh, naturally, the contractor shall exercise due care in protecting uh, from damage all existing city facilities, structures, and utilities, both above the surface and underground. We do expect if the contractor is to uh, stump grind, it is on them to contact uh, Call Before You Dig or USA to make sure that any underground utilities are properly located. Um, it is the contractor's responsibility uh, to ensure that those utilities or facilities are protected. Um, let's see, we talked about emergencies. We do find that the contractor has not taken sufficient precaution for the safety of the public, um, that the city can take action to uh, to make sure that that is, is addressed uh, at, our, at our discretion. I'll jump into scope of work category B. Uh, this is specific to trees maintenance. So again, this is more specifically related to the work uh, and that is to be performed out in the field. Again, I mentioned the, the California license. So not only the license I previously mentioned, but the C61 D49 Master Tree Trimmers license is required as part of this um, proposal. So you would likely need to include a copy of that or show that you do have that license in your proposal. Um, OSHA certification of aerial equipment is required and ISA arborist certification for at least one member of each crew. There must be a certified arborist on site during all tree maintenance operations, as well as during an emergency or a call out, there must be an arborist available to perform services on any site. The scope of this is the trees within community parks, school athletic fields, passive parks, facilities, streetscapes, medians, parkways, urban forest, and trail areas throughout the city. Uh, the, the standard uh, trees will be inspected or pruned at a minimum of once every four years. Uh, for most species, a maximum of once every six months, and certain species on a two and a quarter year uh, cycle. Those uh, um, Schedules are provided for you in the appendix, and I'll get into that in a little bit. The, the appendix, the pruning schedule is provided as an attachment to this document. We also do reserve the right to amend the schedule at our discretion. Um, contractor acknowledges personal inspection of the trees within the parks, athletic fields, facilities, streetscapes, 
and has evaluated the extent to which the physical condition will affect the services to be provided. You know, contractor accepts the trees in their present physical condition at the time of contract award and agrees to make no demands upon the city for any improvements or alterations thereof. Contractors should be required to perform and complete all the tree maintenance services in a thorough and professional manner, provide labor tools, equipment, materials, and supplies necessary to complete the work in a timely manner that meets our requirements. Uh, contractor will be required to perform tree maintenance services at various areas throughout the city. We do have an annual pruning program, as I mentioned. Attachment A provides the sample pruning schedule. Uh, the pruning program may require more than one tree crew to work concurrently in order to meet the schedule. So please understand that our expectation is that the schedule is met. That requires one, two, or three crews to maintain the schedule, then that's what, that's what it requires. Uh, we do have a, a GIS uh, database and tree inven inventory. It is in the ESRI file geo database. So the contractor must use our tree inventory the inventory would be returned to us electronically in the ESRI file geodatabase format. The contractor will provide tree pruning dates and services provided that we can be can be uploaded into our inventory. <clears throat> we have our own tree IDs. Uh, those tree IDs will be provided by the city for the inventory and for your for your reference in keeping records. All pruning and tree tying shall conform to the ISA standards. Obviously, we would not allow any trees to be topped. Uh, 14 foot of clearance for branches overhanging uh, curb line into paved section of roadways, eight feet over sidewalks. Uh, lower branching may be allowed for trees on in the background or ornamentals. Uh, plant materials were necessary to maintain access, safe vehicular visibility and clearance. The goal is to prune trees to you know, with the intent of developing healthy, structurally sound trees with natural form and pro proportion, symmetrical appearance, proper vertical and horizontal clearance. So getting into the award of contract, so we will be evaluating these bids based upon a best value evaluation. So uh, while cost is one of the factors that goes into uh, the evaluation, it's not the only uh, factor. Other factors such as uh, conformance to the solicitation, qualifications, previous performance and references, customer service and warranties are all considered uh, when doing the best value evaluation. Uh, we do reserve the right to award one or more contracts depending upon uh, how the bids come in and the interest of the city. We do reserve the right to reject any item or items waive informalities, defects and irregularities in the bids received. There are a few um, items of note here, conflict of interest section in section four, number 36, uh, section 40 termination for default. While we have no intention or ever uh, desire to ever do this, there is the ability for the city to terminate the contract if the contractor is in default or breach of agreement. There's a list on section four, number 57, of all the submittals that are required for this bid, please pay careful attention to this and make sure uh, that you have submitted everything that is in this, in this document. The guarantee of good faith, which I mentioned earlier and Shay will probably mention again, um, transmittal letter, financial statements, references, the cost of services is at the end. You know, a clearly a well-written statement of ability to provide service is critical for the committee that's evaluating these bids to understand how you're going to provide service to the city, technical ability and experience. Uh, if any subcontractors are intended to be used, that would be need to be included. The extra work guarantee signed and included, as well as any unspecified value added offerings and statement of compliance with insurance requirements. I do uh, encourage you all to thoroughly read through the insurance requirements that are outlined in the bid document. Um, they are there for a reason, so please do make sure you you, you read that. Um, Shay, would you like to speak to the bid submittal process? Yes, thank you, Tim. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending. My name is Shay Sines. I work in the city's purchasing department. 
and then supporting Tim and his team with this uh, solicitation. Um, I would like to encourage anyone who is watching this video who has not registered with Planet Bids to do so. Uh, it's the best way to receive updates on this uh, on this solicitation, and you will need to be registered in order to upload your bid uh, electronically. Uh, for this bid, uh, what's required is the um, bid documents, the bid submittals would be submitted as one PDF and then financial statements would be submitted uh, as the second document. These are both electronic uploads. Uh, Planet Bids is fairly simple to use. Uh, if you have any questions regarding using Planet Bids, um, their customer service is excellent. Um, but also you can reach out to me via phone or email. My contact information is in, is in listed in the bid documents and I can walk you through uh, how to upload or navigate Planet Bids. Uh, I do like to recommend that uh, contractors not wait till the last minute. Uh, I can't guarantee what your upload speeds are. Uh, again, the due date is uh, May 20th by 2 p.m. Um, <clears throat> regarding the list of submittals that Tim just mentioned, uh, again, I'll just reiterate, please make sure that you check everything off on that list um, and give us as much information uh, as relevant so we can uh, properly evaluate the bids. Um, and then uh, the guarantee of good faith, which is page three of the document, again, please make sure that that is signed and submitted with your bid documents. Um, that's about it. Uh, thank you for your interest in doing business with the city of Carlsbad. Tim? All right, thank you, Shay. Uh, again, the, the timeline here, just to reiterate uh, where we are and where we're headed. So questions, any questions due by April 30th at two o'clock, email to me. Uh, we will answer them and upload them by May 4th. Bids are due on May 20th. We, the intent, and this could fluctuate a little bit, but our intent is to go to city council for the award of agreement on July 13th. And the start of services date is July 16th. I do apologize that there is not a lot of time uh, in between there. Um, I, I just, the way that this uh, panned out, it, it did not give us a, a lot of time for a transition period, um, but Ultimately, that is the, the situation that we are in. So uh, we would anticipate that. And obviously, the first term of the agreement is a two-year term uh, ending on July 12th with the ability to uh, possibly extend for additional two two-year terms. There are a few appendices uh, to this RFB document. I mentioned the IPM plan. You know, please do take a look at it. Appendix B is a copy of a, it's a sample agreement does not need to be completed at this time, but this is here for your reference. This is uh, the actual uh, contract language that we would be looking to the vendor to, to agree to. There's a lot in here, uh, talks about the scope, the term, the status of the contractor. This is a prevailing wage uh, agreement. So section six of the appendix B, the sample agreement talks about prevailing wage, talks about compliance with DIR, uh, labor code sections, we are uh, highly encouraging you to pay attention to that, to read it and to be aware of what that means to you uh, as a contractor. Uh, Appendix C is our cost of services uh, proposal. So here you'll, you'll see what we are looking for for cost. And what I've, I've done is we've broken down all of our 33 uh, printing zones throughout the city. We have provided an extensive uh, attachment that is basically the entire tree inventory broken down into each of these zones. And we are looking for a cost to prune each zone, um, a flat rate cost per tree, as well as the total cost for the block pruning zone, as well as the supplemental pruning zone. And that's all broken down in the uh, uh, attachment that we provided for you. So all the trees are there, species, size, condition, location, uh, and they're broken down into the, the full block prune and the supplemental zone. So that you'll see there's a couple zones here, 10 
and 31 that do not have a supplemental pruning zone, all the others do. For the purposes of, of bidding and evaluating the, the proposals, I've simplified it a bit by taking the total cost of the block pruning zones, the total cost of the supplemental pruning zones divided by four and two respectively to get an estimated annual cost. And that is the base will be the basis for uh, evaluating the proposals. It's simplified obviously a bit because we, we do or we may need to change uh, what zones or how many zones are done each year. Obviously the contractor will be paid based upon the actual work performed, uh, but this is a simplified way to just uh, have a, 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 an easy way to evaluate the cost uh, that each contractor is providing. So this is your, your base cost proposal. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we have a bid schedule B, which is just unit costs for specific services. So tree trimming at various uh, DBH, tree trimming for palms, uh, root pruning, root barrier installation, stump grinding, uh, those types of things. So please, we, we do and we would like prices for these, uh, these services as well, because it could be extra work. It could be uh, added work that we would be looking to have performed uh, based upon these unit costs. When you're getting into the attachment that we provided, so we have provided you with maps of all of our tree maintenance zones. So you can clearly see the, the zones that are, are listed on the bid, um, Schedule A. You can see where they lay out on the city and you can see what is included in each of those zones. So it's the street tree zones, the facilities tree zones, median tree zones, et cetera. Likewise, we've included the pruning schedule. This schedule goes out to 2030. This is a general schedule. It's not um, meant to be uh, set in stone. We do res you know, reserve the right and often at times might have a need to uh, move a zone up or move a zone back depending upon uh, conditions. But this is generally the zone. You see the orange blocks and the, the key at the bottom block pruning, the green blocks, SP supplemental pruning, and then the two that I mentioned that did not have supplemental uh, zones in there, no supplemental in the blue, um, the blue blocks. So, you know, you will need to take a look at this schedule, take a look at the inventory that we provided. Here's a, just a screenshot of what that looks like. It's fairly extensive, but we've wanted to give you all of the information that you possibly could need to provide us with you know, accurate pricing for the services that we're looking for. So that document does outline all the species. Again, the zones, the type, the diameter, and the location of the trees. So we feel that that does provide enough information for you to give us accurate pricing. If you have questions, obviously you can uh, submit them to me and we'll certainly try to help you as best that we can. So that's the, that is the story. Again, this is the last uh, slide. This is just a recap of the uh, timeline. If there are any questions uh, after this meeting, feel free to send me an email. Uh, we'll upload the questions and answers so that everybody has an opportunity to see uh, all questions that were submitted um, and everybody can see the answers as well. So that's all I have for today. I thank you all for joining us. Um, I look forward to uh, seeing uh, the bids and I'm happy to see uh, you all here today. So thank you very much. I appreciate it and have a really good day.